I was a little apprehensive about getting into drones at first, but being an electrical engineer, the science and technology around these machines was just too cool to resist. So I jumped right in. Shortly after I found my way onto a commercial set, I knew I needed something different, something to set me apart from the rest of the crowd, something that I was just starting to see myself in some other drone videos that I started exploring on the internet, and that was FPV. And man, am I glad that I jumped in when I did. A big draw for me diving into FPV was just that, diving. That's perspective that I had never seen out of a camera before, and it was so, so stimulating, I knew I had to do it. What an adrenaline rush. It is insane what you can do with these tools. I love it. As it turns out, you don't need an electrical engineering degree to get into drones or to even build them. There are plenty of resources online from the likes of Joshua Bardwell, Mr. Steel, Oscar Liang, and a plethora of others. And now, maybe a little bit from me. We'll see. Today's drone build is gonna take old components from a true X-frame and put it into a new frame that's known as a dead cat frame. This frame has a little bit spread out arms in the front that keep these propellers out of the view of the live feed camera that streams directly to my goggles. The reason I am upgrading my drone frame is because I'm involved with a live stream project that we'll be chasing drift cars with. There's a lot I could go over today about FPV drones. I'm gonna try and keep it pretty basic, show you a little bit about how to build, show you resources where you can learn how to do more, and show you a lot of footage of what I can do with these drones. Something that separates FPV drones from your typical camera drone, like a DJI Mavic or an Altel Evo, is the way these drones are controlled. Your Autel Evo or your DJI Mavic are controlled with GPS positioning and sensors. These drones, all they have is a camera and a radio signal that are controlled from the pilot. The components that make up a drone are the propellers, the motors, your video transmission system, your radio transmission system, which controls how the drone is moving, the brain of the drone, or the flight controller, and the ESC, or the electronic speed controller for the motors. And of course, the last component, which is the battery. This is an FPV radio, is what we use to control our FPV drones. As you can see, the left stick has no spring return to center, it makes it much different than your typical DJI drone. What we can do with these controllers is we can also plug them into PCs and use them as game controllers on games that will help you simulate how to fly these drones. For a complete list of tools, you can go to fpvknowitall.com. That list was compiled by Joshua Bardwell. He'll have a list of drone components and tools that you will need to start building drones in both the relatively cheap options to the relatively quality and more expensive options. Just to run through some numbers for you quick. A typical freestyle or race FPV drone will run you about $450 to $650, depending on if you are building it yourself or if you're buying it ready to fly or bind and fly. A radio will typically cost you between $200 and $350. And your goggles will cost you usually around $550 and $650 for a quality set, brand new. Used FPV components can usually be found for about 50% off the cost. So say a drone costs four to $500 to build, you should be able to pick up that used drone for about $200. There are other cheaper options. You can start out with a Tiny Whoop, which I highly recommend after you're done learning on the simulators. A great Tiny Whoop kit would be to find an Emacs Tiny Hawk they might be on the second or third iteration now. They usually have a ready to fly kit that comes with box goggles, a radio, and a small drone. It's roughly about $200 to $350 as well. The FPV drones that I use the most are my Freestyle Quads here and my Cinewoop that you see here. 
The Cinewhoop is great because it has these protective guards to keep you from injuring people or other soft targets that you might be flying around. The cameras that I use for my FPV drones are typically my GoPro Hero 10. I like the GoPro Hero 10 because it has a removable lens cap. And you can add things like an ND filter like I have on this one, or just replace it when it breaks. Some other cameras that I'll fly around on bigger drones is a Zcam M4. I like the Zcam M4 because it's a very affordable option to get into in the box camera style. It's a very robust system and it has a locking lens mount. When you're taking extreme moves with a heavy drone like this, things tend to move and being able to lock things down securely and tightly is very important. It's a pretty impressive drone. As you can see, it has eight motors. So it takes a much bigger battery and has a lot more components. This combo is the ultimate cinema combo for me. If you want something that's better than a GoPro, this is what we're gonna take out and film with. Another box camera style that's similar to the Z cam is obviously the Red Komodo and arguably the most popular box style cam. I was just blown away by the footage that we took here at Clockwork 9 with these cameras and it really has changed my mind on what I think about these. Now you're not wrong thinking that it, this can all add up very quickly. We've talked about all these drone components and we haven't even gone into the cost of batteries or the cost of your GoPros or cameras that you decide to put on this. So how do we keep that cost low when you're learning? Well, we use simulators. Personally, I use Velocidrone and a lot of my racing friends do as well. Typically, I practice flying in real life, either in my house with a tiny whoop, or I'll go to a football field or a baseball field during their off seasons and practice with my freestyle quads or racing quads. Something I highly recommend, especially if you're going to be pursuing business interests with your drones, is to get your Part 107. Part 107 is a test given by the FAA to people to become licensed drone pilots for commercial work. Right now is actually a great time to get into FPV. There's a lot of updating technology. We've had this new digital system from DJI for a few years now, and they're starting to upgrade their system. And the older analog systems are upgrading to an HD system as well. Three steps that I'd recommend to somebody who's interested in getting into FPV would be first, to seek out the FPV community nearest to you. Most major cities have a multi-GP race group in which you can find FPV pilots that can help you along or even sell you secondhand parts, or maybe even just let you fly for the first time. Second step would be to look for videos from Joshua Bardwell, Mr. Steele, and articles from Oscar Liang. I'll leave some links below. Third, if you're financially ready, would be to buy a radio and a drone simulator for anywhere between 30 to 55 bucks on the internet. Usually you can find those from Velocidrone, which is a standalone software that you download to either a Mac or a PC, or you can find many FPV simulator options in Steam. Now the Steam option, you can use a game controller, but I highly recommend using an FPV radio or controller. The reason that is, is because this is what you're eventually gonna be flying in, and the resolution in these sticks is much greater than on a typical game controller that you'll find from PlayStation, Xbox, or PC. Thanks for stopping by today. I had a blast teaching you about what I love to do with FPV drones. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks.